Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space World 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to test out Venture Star, which was a proposal from Lockheed Martin for an SSTO, a single stage to orbit space plane. And it was supposed to basically be an advanced shuttle, be much cheaper than the shuttle. And it would carry a certain amount of cargo to orbit, and not quite as much as the shuttle I don't think. Uh, but it was smaller. Uh, on the pad it would be half the size, so there was that. And it had really large aerospike engines in the back, as seven of them, in fact. These are the RS-2200 engines. Uh, they get basically uh, very similar stats to the SSMEs, the space shuttle main engines. Um, the mass is uncertain. We don't have a good mass on that. I assumed that we would get something like a 73 thrust to weight ratio, so that's pretty bad uh, as far as things go. Not the worst ever and aerospikes could be much worse, so not entirely sure about that. It doesn't get very good sea level ISP. This is a known number. This is something that was stated in information about the RS-2200. Uh, vacuum is about the same as a space shuttle main engine, but sea level ISP is not as good as the space shuttle main engine, so that's interesting to note. Uh, there is a quirk about this, Though, you see, with aerospikes, the nozzles are sort of tilted like this so that they hit the aerospike, right? And if I want to simulate the plume and have the thrust transform go like that, that reduces our efficiency by the amount that the nozzles are tilted. Uh, so I haven't tilted it as much as the actual chambers are tilted. I've tilted them slightly, but that still reduces our efficiency. And so we're going to have to see whether we get to orbit with the sort of reduced efficiency that we have here. It is an SSTO, so it's pretty sensitive to basically everything. Uh, the dry mass of the vehicle, the engine performance, and all, and of course the payload. So anyway, I've sort of given it my own sort of windows. Uh, it's got that sad puppy dog face that I seem to put on everything. And uh, one other issue is that I don't have a good texture for the kind of tiles that they were going to use for the Venture Star. It was going to use diamond-shaped metallic tiles as opposed to ceramic tiles that they had on the shuttle. Right now we've just got a standard ceramic tile texture uh, covering those areas. I will try and find a way to get a, I mean, cook up a metallic tile texture, but probably won't be as good looking as this. Um, because these are professionally done, if you will, although a little bit weird because in it, invariably with the curved surfaces, things get weird with the tiles when you texture them. Uh, but yeah, we have a cargo bay. And the current Delta V that you're seeing is based on having 20 tons in the cargo bay. So we may not want quite so much. I think it was advertised for 20 tons. Its cargo bay is uh, not as long as the shell's cargo bay, but it does have generally the same dimensions uh, in terms of depth and width. So, yeah, I mean, that's because it has to carry the huge hydrogen oxygen tanks in here as well, right? But uh, length, uh, it couldn't be done. So, yep, that is what features. To be entirely honest, I have no idea how they physically fit enough propellant in here considering that we have to use hydrogen and the measured volume of this, and I tried to get the size of it as right as possible. The measured volume of this isn't quite enough to fit this much hydrogen and oxygen, uh, especially with the cargo bay. And if you remove the cargo bay, it would be. It's about that much difference. Uh, it's possible that it might be thicker, but in other images, it didn't seem to be much thicker than this, uh, based on comparison with the shuttle. Maybe it doesn't round as much here, but that's not quite as much. We need about we need about this much more space, <laughs> so uh, maybe may, or maybe a little bit less than that. The center mass and center lift for return is gonna be an issue. Right now, if we don't have any of the fuel and have half of our OMS fuel. Uh, we see that it goes like this, which is probably still not the best for re-entry, but we'll see. It does have these huge wings, and I've made them all moving wings. They are FAR compatible. They have the FAR mass. I did not write in the mass. FAR did that. Fair Space Research, the mod. 
and same with the vertical stabilizers, but they're all all moving. So we'll see if that helps the situation or not. Uh, the fact that the center mass actually moves back when we lose propellant is realistic because most of the fuel mass is in the oxygen tanks, which would be up here. Um, the hydrogen tanks would be alongside here and they'd be fairly light. So we aren't taking off from a runway. This does take off vertically. I just wanted to show it horizontally. I have assumed a few things. One, I've assumed that they would just use standard uh, shuttle OMS engines for OMS engines. We've buried them in here. And so they're hypergolic and they use a Mon 3 MMH and an MH and MMH as you see there. And I've given it exactly the same OMS fuel as the space shuttle. Uh, it is basically as heavy as the space shuttle. If we dump all the MMH Mon 3 hydrogen and oxygen, if we take out the payload, uh, you'll see uh, it's heavier than a little bit heavier than the space shuttle, which it ought to be because of the fact that it's containing the fuel tanks. Um, it's about 98 tons without the payload. And when you think about it, it's basically acting like the space shuttle plus the external tank, right? It's got a little bit more fuel than the external tank, but it's about that. And if you take the external tank's mass and add the space shuttle's mass, this is actually a little bit less. Uh, so they were pretty optimistic. They'd have to do a pretty good job, especially considering the air spikes are so heavy. Um, with seven of them, they basically have more than double the mass, uh, engine mass that the SSMEs would have had on the shuttle. So that is the situation. We are going to try to launch it to orbit. The issue is it might not be able to carry this payload and we'll have to see. We'll have to be very careful about our launch profile. The SSTOs are a completely different launch profile than anything else. You can see three minutes and 30 seconds to orbit. Well, of course it has to thrall down because its max thrust to weight ratio will eventually get to be 13. Only 1.4 off the pad, but yeah. Now on the engines, I have tried to match the sea level thrust. Uh, and their stated vacuum thrust was less than this. However, that makes no sense given their stated... So they had a few numbers in the RS-2200 pamphlet. This was from Rockwell. Uh, they had a sea level thrust, a vacuum thrust, a sea level ISP, and a vacuum ISP. One of those numbers have to be wrong, <laughs> basically. Uh, it, is, it is not possible for them to have those four numbers. So I went with the sea level thrust because that's sort of critical for getting off the ground. We can't really have too much less of a thrust weight ratio than this. So the max thrust could have been right if the sea level ISP was wrong. If the sea level ISP is higher, then the max thrust and vacuum could have been lower. So it's a trade-off between that number and that number. It could be that the sea level ISP is better than what we have here which would be good, of course, we would like that, and that would make it a more favorable comparison to the space shuttle main engines. Right now, this is less than what the space shuttle main engines do, even though the engines are heavier. Uh, so, yeah, it's a good amount of questions that we have to consider. So, and that it might not have as uh, this amount of fuel. I didn't actually know how much fuel it carried, uh, the amount of fuel I put in is based on, it was stated as having a on-pad mass of a thousand tons, but that was a round number. But also, we need enough thrust weight ratio at the start to get off the ground. So, that is why it has this amount of fuel in particular. Okay, switching to the VAB and we'll launch. Now, the SPH may not have given an accurate impression of how wide this thing is. But it is wide, and that means it's going to get a lot of drag, which is one of the things that might be an issue as far as our Delta V is concerned. For an SSTO, 8,700 is not bad because we don't have to do staging. There's no low thrust part of the journey, and the issue with this is mainly the fact that it's going to get a lot of drag. So we'll see how that works out for us. Uh, yep. All right, so here we go. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. 
So this is what the plume looks like right now. I can't. I don't know what to do about it really, <laughs> but uh, maybe, maybe this is the wrong technique. I know that there is an aerospike plume configuration in real plumes, and maybe we don't want the wings actuating actually. Actually, I haven't configured them for the way they ought to actuate either. Let's just go zero, zero, zero on those for now. So, in actuality, what they do is they'd have differential throttling on the engines in order to control it, but we don't do that here in KSP very much. So, I've just put a tiny bit of gimbling two degrees only. You can see sort of maxing out the pitch there too. If you leave the wing controls actuating then it's quite possible to control it like that. And I will put this as it is in the video des description. So it'll be a little zip file, standalone mod. Not part of any of the others. Okay, we are gonna throttle down now. Let's say two G's ish. The engines can throttle down to 20%. In theory, they could just shut off chambers. And this is realistic, by the way. Uh, each RS2200 had uh, 14 chambers altogether, 7 on one side, 7 on the other. And that was to generate the required amount of thrust. You couldn't have too small a chamber, otherwise you're just not going to get much thrust and you're wasting a whole lot of mass on a very huge spike. So you need the chambers to be a certain size in relation to the spike for it to be efficient at all. In terms of thrust weight ratio. Well, we'll not do a very good job of getting to orbit right now. But in any case, 20 tons or 2% of the launch mass is very optimistic for an SSTO anyway. Now if we add a hydrogen-oxygen system for the OMS and the RCS, because you'd still need RCS fuel, right? That might be a different story. Yeah, even with the OMS fuel we can't make orbit at this point. So I'm just gonna stop it and we are gonna try off a lesser payload. I'm not really willing to make the body too much lighter than this. So now we could lock the wings right away. That would reduce drag. But I wonder when they came up with the payload capacity of this, whether they took drag into account at all. We could also reduce the mass of the wings. Uh, that's potentially fungible. It depends on how, but they're, you know, the very protected wings, they have to actuate when re-entering, so that's asking a lot. Oh yeah, these aren't in symmetry. They could be placed in symmetry, but they're not right now. I placed them on nodes on the body. But I made the wings so that they wouldn't be separate. They're the same wing. That's why uh, it's not heat protected on the bottom completely. Uh, you know, normally you would expect that there'd be heat tiles all the way on the bottom side. But in order to avoid having two separate wing pieces, I decided not to do that. So they're the same piece, they're just placed in symmetry. Or right now, I didn't place them on symmetry, but uh, they can be. Okay, so I am going to reconsider our payload. And we are going to reduce it to 15 tons as well. That doesn't get us a whole lot more here. It might be that we just have to reduce the body mass, but the mass of this, the dry mass of the body, not including the landing gear, the engines, the, the control surfaces and all that, is just 65.8 tons, which is really light. They would have, I mean, of course, they did have to do some really fancy stuff in order to get to that, uh, but they didn't really get to that, right? Uh, you might be more familiar with the X33, which was the prototype for this. That had two smaller engines in the back, and that was what they were working on. 
uh, a lot of the websites sort of mix the two up or just conflict the two. Uh, trying to find images of the Venture Star for reference was difficult. Almost all the reference images were for the X33, not the Venture Star. And the main way you could tell, the body shape is very similar, but the Venture Star is a little bit thinner on the height. And also it has the seven engines in the back, so. Now technically, Venture Star was supposed to carry passengers as cargo, I think. I think it was meant to be an uncrewed launcher, so I sort of forced a cabin in there. Incidentally, when I talked about the volume, I was not including the cabin area. The cabin's actually really, really small in here. It, it looks very big, sort of, but it's actually just about this area with four crew. So it's not a huge amount of space. But uh, yeah. Um, considering that it is carrying crew as cargo, we could take that out of the cargo capacity and say that about five tons is just for the crew cabin. Maybe we could justify it like that. So 15 tons, here we go. SAS on, throttle this up, and ignition. And launch. But ultimately, part of the problem is just the inefficiency of having them having the nozzles be tilted and maybe I just have to untilt them more I'm gonna go steeper initially in the hope that that gets us through the atmosphere and the drag quicker all right well going steeper certainly didn't help we are not going to make it like this either and certainly not in order to be able to descend again it's close if we use all the OMS fuel, but it's probably not worth it. So I'm going to change the thrust transforms on the engine so that the thrust points straight back, which will be more efficient, and we'll see what we can get out of that instead. Okay, well, I'm not seeing a whole lot of improvement as far as Delta V is concerned. Previously, when I had changed the thrust vectors because I had them at a steeper angle, I made them a shallower angle. Uh, that had improved the delta V, but this time from the shallower angle to just straight back, it hasn't done a whole lot. So we'll try it one more time, and after that I'll just leave it to the viewers uh, to see what they can do with this. And I, I might change the look of the thing. It occurs to me that maybe we should try to have it without the cabin in front, at least a variant of it, because it was intended to be uncrewed by default. I'll think about that, but I sort of like having it crewed by default. I don't know. One thing's for sure, I didn't get a whole lot of benefit from going steeper, so we're probably not going to do that this time. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. launch. Well, you can see very visibly that the plumes are going straight back now. Oh, we didn't uh, stop the control surfaces. Uh, let's give it some more particles. There are a lot of nozzles after all. Each of the engines has 14, so yep, lots of nozzles. As far as finding the parts is concerned, you just have to type Venture Star. I'm using adjustable landing gear for the landing gear. That's uh, currently part of uh, Kerbal Foundries, I think it is. I'm using a lot of throttling in order to sort of bring the prograde vector down so that we don't have to deviate too much from it. I've sort of got the opposite problem that I normally have with the long duration Hydrolox upper stages this is way too short duration, so the whole thing is quite a bit different. Now we could dump some of the OMS fuel and then just go with that and we'll get some Delta V out of that just having less of it because the OMS engines are less efficient than the main engines. However, of course that limits our capabilities, we wouldn't be able to rendezvous with other stuff. Of course, this was just supposed to 
send payload to low Earth orbit and then come back. That was the idea. Very simple sort of thing. So it wasn't necessarily supposed to rendezvous with the station or anything like that. Well, we could have probably done ourselves a favor by igniting the OMS engines now. We do have little plumes on them. We just uh, dumped the low efficiency fuel, if you will. Well, now we're just on the OMS engines. And if we get to orbit, we're not coming back down. So, yeah. That's with 15 tons right now. Oh, and the OMS engines definitely do not gimbal here, so... The RCS active. The RCS seems to be working. Well, I will leave further experimentation to the viewers. Maybe you can come up with lighter landing gear or something. Who knows? And uh, Or you could use the tweakable feature of FAR on the wings to make them lighter. And, yeah. SSTOs around Earth. It's a difficult thing. So, I'm just going to cut this for now and just have this roll over just for looks. Re-entry testing will be a whole other thing. But I will link the mod in the video description having not done that, so... Yeah, probably it's not going to be great on re-entry just yet. Another possible modification is, like I said, maybe the sea level ISP number, number was wrong. And actually the vacuum thrust number was correct. In which case we can bump up the ISP to match the thrust indicated. And get better efficiency and getting better efficiency make this work out better. So anyway, as it finishes its roll and is coming straight back down again. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.